maintaining, but better than that. Like, you know, live comfortably. That's it. So he makes enough where he could live comfortably, doesn't have to pay for the daycare, has him at his mom's house. And that's the neighbor that I would consider, but I just don't know her enough. And she's got, you know, quite a few sons. One of them's got a disability. <laughs> You being uh you being a single parent, uh how how old is your baby? Mm -hmm. She's three now. Uh your baby is your your baby is three years old, uh still uh you know, pre uh you know, pre kindergarten. Um Yeah. You she you, went, you had guess, to but... you had to take time off from actual truck driving to take care of your kid because of uh, not that much child care out there. How did that, how, how does that, that make you feel? And, and how are you looking for trucking companies that would accommodate you and your child care and your child care needs? You know, I'm actually glad I get to talk about this because now we said we won't talk about the situation that happened that led to this, but after getting out of that, I don't think a lot of, in general, people care what you go through and you don't realize till you go through it. So trying to get a job in trucking, being the only parent, no child support, I hate to say that, but no child support, and then daycare, you have to find a daycare because there's a lack of daycare. And the hours for daycare does not match up with your typical local truck driving. That's why I ended up doing farming because they're typically smaller companies. They don't follow DOT regulations or they don't have to follow the same, I should say. And it's more flexible or can be depending on the owners and the people you work with. But regular truck driving, finding a job that you can actually do where you can put your kid in daycare and mind you up here, the country, there's not as much daycare. And when there is, like if I were to go to the closest city, which would be Eau Claire, Wisconsin, their, their daycare is $300 a week. So a week. And it's like, yeah, and then you got to make sure you're on time to pick up your kid. And, you know, you got to, so typical truck driving does, isn't, I thought I'd always be set being able to truck drive, but being local isn't a really good option. And then there's also, you know, like I've been looking OTR, see if I could do something regional or, you know, bring my kid with. I've seen a lot of people do it, but she's not old enough for most of their insurance policy. So, yeah. and I know I could make a lot of money being OTR, but I can't do that. I don't really have any help. so. It's like, it's very frustrating. I hate to say this, but uh, a lot of misconceptions in that uh, statement of being OTR and you can make a lot of money. There's a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there is a little bit of truth to that. I mean, you, you know, the more miles you drive, the more money you will make. But that's not always yeah. the case, and it varies from company to company. So... I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not going to say that there isn't a lot no, of money to right. be made in OTR. I'm just saying that it varies between companies of how much money you can make OTR. Yeah, and I suppose what I was thinking, too, was um, yeah, for me, local, like, you know, if I were to put her in daycare and local, if that was even possible um, with the hours, like if somebody's hours could work with mine or, you know, if I could watch, have someone watch her third shift and work a third shift, I still don't think that would work. But um, local to me is like being OTR because you're never home. Like I remember being local and I'm like, well, what is the difference between this? I'm gone half of the day and I have to try to sleep when I get back. But then OTR, the reason why I say it's more money is because I guess that's probably the most money I've ever made. I, and you do have to find the right company, you know. I agree with you there, though. I didn't really think about it like that. You see, and they trick you too, so you got to be careful because you could be looking on Indeed or somewhere, 
and then you think, oh, look, they pay this much a week or they pay this much. Um, it says you'll make this much, but then you get in there and it's a complete lie and you just might have quit a different job. That's why another reason why I was working on farms and I thought about working in a factory instead, which is, you know, kind of disappointing since I got the CDL. You think you'd want to use it. But yeah, I, you're right. Now you, you don't. Now you had help. On, uh, you had help. Unfortunately, that help is not available to you no more. Uh, what huh? about what? What about outside help? Like what about family? Like you know, because a lot of a lot of females that has kids, you know, as young as yours, you know, and I'm just saying I'm seeing from you know additional videos and and places and Facebook groups, they be like, yeah, I got kids, but I'm still doing OTR and, and all like that. But you got, you got help. You got family help. So do you have any family help? Like, you know, your moms, your cousins, sisters, you know? No, no. Um, the only help that I could get is a neighbor, but I don't know them very well because I haven't lived here long enough. And for me as a mother, and I'm sure any parent, man or, you know, father or mother would understand. It, it's going to take me a while to trust somebody with my kid, too. Talk about so, talk about the um, difficult talk. Kat, talk about the difficulties of of being a being a single parent with with no help and and trying to be a truck driver. Talk about talk about how difficult that is. I said that I would see because I heard that you were a serious man to be treated with respect. But it's really difficult because my next door neighbor, um, they have a son and he is a dump truck driver and like he can just leave his kids with his parents, you know, their grandma. And uh, my family spread out everywhere. So over Wisconsin, over the country. Um, I don't really have a big family or a family that's close. They're like all, you know, they either just don't talk to each other or, you know, it's it's like that. So to me, I it, it sucks because I sit there and I watch him and he gets to make Doing dump truck would be nice because he makes a lot of, he makes good, what I consider a lot of money, which would be enough for me and my daughter to survive. Um, how do you say? Um, to survive and not just to survive, but to, I can't even think of the word. Can you think of it? Like survive, but you're doing well. Uh, maintaining, I, it, uh, maintaining I guess. Maintaining, but better than that. Like, you know, live comfortably that's it so he makes enough where he could live comfortably doesn't have to pay for the daycare has him at his mom's house and that's the neighbor that i would consider but i just don't know her enough and she's got you know quite a few sons one of them's got a disability living there so um it's no offense to her but like uh their house is pretty crowded so i wouldn't want to like just put my daughter there for as many hours as dump truck can can ask of you like he works sometimes 72 hours i noticed in a week and if he gets to stay out like if he gets he does construction so if he gets to do like somewhere two hours away he can just stay out and they pay him for the day all day like not just when he's working but anytime he's not working and it's like, I do get kind of like bitter because I'm like, well, if I had help, I'd be able to be making that much money. But I'm kind of just getting by. And every time I look for a job, you know, they're super excited to talk to me because they're like, oh, you got all this experience. And, you know, I got my tankers endorsements. I have a good MVR. So they're super excited. But then when I say, well, I got to work with my three-year-old kid and and then, then I got to say the embarrassing thing, like I'm an only single parent. They're like, oh, 
you know, like you can hear the change in their voice and it's really disappointing because, I mean, <laughs> I I see other people being able to do it and I can't. It's kind of my fault, but at the same time, like it would be nice to be able to do it. It's kind of discouraging, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep saying, you know, keep your head up. Something would, would definitely yeah. turn around. Would definitely turn around. All right. So with, with, with that said, now, you know, are you still farming, or, or what, what's your status? Yeah. What's your status now, and what's your daycare situation now? Okay, so right now, um, my daycare situation is, is she's still in a daycare, but the daycare is like a half an hour out of the way, or maybe 40 minutes, depends. Um, so it's like where I live, I have to travel to get to her daycare at 6 o'clock. Then I got to travel back, and then I got to go, I get pin dropped, location, to where the farm is or to where I need to go, you know, if I'm doing asphalt or if I'm doing like the farming manure, um, I get a pin drop location that I drive to in my own car instead of everybody else. They, um, they kind of carpool there. So I don't really get to carpool and they save money and then, <laughs> I don't want it to be like a poor me thing, but like it, it kind of just sucks, you know. But yeah, I do work. I um, they're they're flexible with me with the hours. It's just hard for me to understand them sometimes. Coming from the from a city, being a city girl, and then in the country working in farming, which I never did my whole life until I moved up here and became a single mom. So yeah, I do that still, and then I get to I get more flexible hours but then at the same time i don't make as much as what i could does that answer that i don't know sacrifice if I, like went off Sa subject. sacrifice yeah. i mean you gotta gotta sacrifice one thing for another and sometimes sacrifices is, is a good thing and uh sacrifices could be a a, a bad thing but you know, a mm -hmm. lot of people, a lot of people out here don't know, don't either know the meaning of sacrificing or just don't want to sacrifice. Um, it sounds as though yeah. as that you, you know, you're you're sacrificing, uh, you know, to get your uh, family together in the future. You know, females with kids um, that drives trucks, you know, they. You know, yeah. they tend to make it look easy. Like, you know, they got their kid in the truck. The kid look like they're about three, four, five years old or whatever. And even if they're mm -hmm. not in the truck, they still, you know, talk about how easy it is and and it could be done and all like that. And for somebody like you to, uh, to try to find a, a footing in that, it's it's difficult. How is it possible that you're making it look well, easy, but it's difficult for for me? What's your what's Excuse me. I happen to be passing. I thought you'd might like some coffee. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you. My biggest thing is I haven't been able to find a company that, besides farming, like I said, that, because I want to go OTR, so if any company you know or anybody knows of any company, their insurance policies are typically like five or seven and up. So if someone has a four-year-old in there, I'm I'm wondering, like, what company do you work for? Because... If you think about it, yeah, the insurance policy, I can see that. If there's one person driving and there's a three-year-old or a two-year-old or a baby in there, I mean, you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to make sure the kid's not wandering around. There's, you know, like, okay, there's DOT regulations. Technically, they're supposed to be buckled up in the back, I believe, 
at all times. I could be wrong. But from what I understand, I know not a lot of people follow that. But um, I knew a truck driver that brought his kids with, you know, but it was short trips and stuff like that. Um, But never someone under, like, five. I've never heard of that. And if they do, that's really cool. I mean, I don't know. My problem has been the insurance policy. And I suppose I could probably sneak her in, but that would be, I think that'd be a really bad idea. Yeah, that that like, would I just be. I can't see myself doing that. That would be a bad so idea. So that's what it's been. But if you think about it, think about their insurance policy too. If there's a kid in there and you have to worry about the kid either being buckled up all the time, that's kind of cruel. Because um, the company I work for, Farming, they told me I could bring my daughter with in one of the, the trucks. The manure trucks. Okay, so yeah, it, it's a day cab and it's nice, but I'd have to put a seat in there for her. It's very bumpy. Um, you know, she's potty training, so it would be, I'd have to keep her in pull ups longer. And I don't know, the whole thing is just, if, if I did go OTR like that, that is difficult in itself, is what I mean. But if I had to go OTR like that, can you just imagine how hard it would be to potty train my daughter? Like, I suppose you could put, like, one of them little potties in there. But at the same time, it's like your kid would – you'd be better off if your kid was in pull-ups, but then you still got to do all this stuff for your kid under a certain age. When they're older, it totally makes sense because it's like, okay, they could probably handle it. They can bring their tablet. They can do their school online. They can, you know, whatever. They can enjoy themselves. We can, some companies, you might be able to trip plan good enough where you can get out and go see things and stop at parks, you know, like the rest areas with parks or something. But under a certain age, it only makes sense why the insurance point, a lot of companies, it seems like the insurance won't cover it. I've been told before if there was two drivers, if I was team driving, it'd be fine, but not if it's just me. So that is so true. I I see the difficulties in being a female truck driver and having a kid with you. I can I can see all of the all of the issues and all of the problems that arise. But again, like I said, these mm-hmm. late, you know, these female drivers out here with kids and they have have their kids with them, you know, they 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 just sit there and just make it look so easy without even explaining the the difficulties of it and it's just it's just ugh. like i see you talking about all the good stuff and how fun you know how fun y'all having and i got my kids and we going showering and that's my kids in the back of the truck and they having fun but what what about the what about the places that you go the the time that you got to leave your kids in the truck for you know, uh, for a few minutes, or what about going to a to a a shipping and receiving where you have to where you have to leave the keys, it, it keys with the shipper or receiver, and you can't run the truck to run the AC or anything like that. Or what about what about oh, if you I go sure. to a shipper and receiver where you actually have to s- stay in the dock area and you have to leave your kids. In the truck, you know, you, I mean, like sometimes it takes them maybe a half an hour, 30 or 45 minutes up to two hours to get loaded. And, and you have to stay on the dock for that amount of time, leaving your kids in the, in the truck, because some of them places where you go to don't allow kids on the dock while they're getting loaded. Can I help you? Hi, um, my name is Peter Parker. And I would like a coffee, please. Okay, no problem, Peter Parker. I'm going to need y'all to, to show that, explain that. How How is that possible? Because if you're working for a mega carrier, are you are you able to say, okay, well, I, I, I can't go to Walmart uh, because I got kids? You know, I, how how do that work? Mm-hmm. And I just feel that 
instead of just showing all the good, which, you know, what social media is notorious for, I, I, I'm going to need y'all to show how y'all work in, work in the bag. That's, that's what I need to know. I need to know that. And, that. and you know what? If anybody had any tips for me that would help me out, that'd be great, too, because maybe there is a trick that I don't know about. But maybe they're owner operators or I, I don't know. Like, it would be nice to if they if there is a trick to it. Now, I understand it's easy for a quote unquote family. You know, if you got, you know, the boyfriend or a slash husband and then you got the, you know, you got the, the female driver and you got your kid with you, you, you got somebody on there to number one, entertain the kid and number two, watch the kid, you know. Mm-hmm. But what do you, uh, again, what do you do when it's just you and your baby and, you know, your baby starts to get all antsy and all like that? What do you do? You you pull over every five minutes, every time your baby get antsy? Like, we need to know how that work and what do you do to 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 alleviate that type of stress? Because it could get stressful out here. I mean, trucking is stressful as it is but you know having a having a baby on board you know as young as yours could be a little bit more stressful i mean i understand it's pretty good toddler too but it's just you know like because she has all my attention i only got one kid so she's got she gets all my attention so i feel like she probably wouldn't mess around with stuff too much but it, regardless, it's dangerous. Like, what if they open the doors? What if you don't have the... What if they open the doors? Like, like all those things you said, it makes perfect sense. And I actually didn't even think about that part. I was so busy thinking what company would let me that I didn't even think about how dangerous that could be. Well, Kat, uh, I, I I do hope that uh, that, that you're able to uh find something but you also mentioned that you you want to move so uh mm-hmm. are are you in a are, are you in the plans to uh to move or what's what's the status on that yeah i just figure within the next year or two um i've been looking down in kentucky or illinois you know bottom of illinois kentucky different places down south mainly but those are the main two places I would like to move. Um, so, do you feel that you can probably get a better uh, opportunity no, options of I trucking jobs out there? Do you do you feel that? Yeah, I do. I mean, I re- when I lived in Kentucky, there wasn't a lot of trucking companies where I lived. But I think in a different area, it might be better. But one thing I noticed, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I did live there. And I've lived it now. I is it okay to say where I live now? Because it's vague. I'm just saying the state. I I live in Wisconsin, and if anybody else is from Wisconsin, I'm sorry, but people up here are, are not the same. It's not the same as the Southern hospitality. I made friends, and I know they could be fake friends or two faced, whatever. But if you keep your business to yourself, I don't see what the problem is. But people were quick to introduce themselves, to talk to you, to invite you to things. Up here, when I moved from one part, you know, from Kentucky to Wisconsin, it was like a huge difference. Now, I grew up in Wisconsin, but, you know, after living down south and being all over the country and seeing the, diff- you know, the, there is a southern hospitality. And... That's what makes it so difficult up here. Nobody wants to talk to anybody. Nobody wants to make friends with people. There's no community except at churches. But even the churches, there's a dynamic, you know, and um, different people have different religious views. I'm personally just a spiritual person. So for me, it's like, do I force myself to go to church just to have community? Like, there's no community up here. People are just kind of cold and offsetish, like especially in the winter when it gets which is reasonable but i mean 
there's a lot of more community, I felt like, in Kentucky, which I feel like it would be better even if I don't have family that lives there. I feel like people would probably introduce themselves to me and stuff like that. Cat. Well, welcome back. I I do appreciate you coming back and, uh, you know, sitting down with me and chopping it up. I do appreciate that, man. Um, I hope everything uh, work out for you in the future. Sorry for your situation, and hopefully you'll have a good outcome on that. I'm sure it will. It always does, doesn't it? It always works out one way or another. Big G's got it locked, boy. Won't you let me all night? Yeah, take me down. Won't you to make me real wet? Yeah, swim around. Won't you to take it like a G? Yeah, don't make a sound.